All right, now let's talk a little bit about water. Hard versus soft water. Now there's a lot of information here and at the foundation level you can learn these things, but on the exam you're only expected to understand the basic relationship that water has to extraction. And at its most foundational level, it's rather simple. If brewed coffee is 98 to 99 percent water, as we talked about in the last lesson, part two, then good water equals a chance for good coffee. Bad water equals no chance for good coffee. So, also, extremely hard or extremely soft water can greatly affect our extraction. I'll tell a story later about that. Hard water also has a negative effect on our equipment. This can contribute to calcium buildup, water blockages in our equipment when it's exposed over a long period of time or regular use uh, under hot conditions. Okay, so again, good water equals a chance for good coffee. It doesn't guarantee good coffee. We still got to get some things right. But what is good water? It should be free of odor and taste. It should have no visible impurities. It should have 150 milligrams per liter of total dissolved solids. Okay, so this is a measure of the hardness. It might have three to four grains, three to four grains of calcium hardness. Of course, no chlorine. The pH level is a little um, on the basic side, a little bit higher, seven to eight per, or seven to eight pH. Hard water restricts extraction and can cause calcium buildup in equipment, especially espresso machines or anything that's automatic or has a heater and a pump inside. Okay. Tap water contains total dissolved solids. That's kind of a measure of hardness as well. Things that are in the water, minerals, etc. Some dissolved solids are actually needed to produce good coffee beverages. Okay, so imagine water as water as like wind, or water as what? Water is a a force, right, that has to pass through the coffee and it has to interact with that coffee bed in order to uh, hit it, create turbulence, create energy so that it's pulling soluble matter from the coffee bed into our final cup, into our final brew. And um, the water TDS or to total dissolved solids, if it's higher than 250 milligrams, uh, up above we said 150 was a starting point and so 250 would be uh, that would be a higher limit then if it's too high it will actually inhibit extraction of the coffee soluble material again most of this is more advanced is for intermediate and uh, professional courses understanding how those impacts but I wanted to share it with you now in a classroom setting, you should be able to uh, drink and contrast some different coffees, even some different waters, hard water, soft water. When I ran this course one time, it was raining outside and we collected rainwater, which was extremely soft. We put a TDS in it and it was nearly zero. And we tried brewing with the rainwater, which was a wonderful experiment. So you're going, you should be able to uh, not just brew with different waters, taste different waters, but you should also experiment with instant coffee versus fresh brewed coffee. If you can get some Arabica versus Robusta, try it for yourself. This makes a great home experiment and take note of what happens to things like aroma, body, flavor, aftertaste, acidity, balanced. And I said I was going to share a story about my uh, personal experience with brewing with water. So when I would go home, my mother and father, they live on a farm. And on the farm, the water was very hard. Okay, so the total dissolved solids were very high. And I found, my wife actually helped uh, confirm it for me, that the coffee always seemed very weak. Every morning, the flavor just didn't come out. It was lacking aroma. And so it, it felt like the coffee was stale, even though we were actually buying it from a local roaster and it was coming to us freshly roasted. And I kept adding more coffee to the coffee bed. And the coffee pot, you know, it was just an automatic brewer that my father used. It was nearly overflowing because it just 
it took so long for the water to get through this coffee bed because I kept adding more coffee. But I couldn't get the flavor to really pop. So then what I realized and what I actually tested later was the water hardness was so full of total dissolved solids already that it was, it was as if the water, which should carry our coffee to the coffee cup, was saturated. It was saturated with calcium and minerals, things coming from the farm. Okay, this was a natural well of water. And then it was running through their water softener, and so it, would, it had other softener agents in it. This water was so full that it couldn't dissolve and carry the coffee into our cup. And so we would get these, you know, cup of coffee, and it's black, it looks like coffee, but it had a very distinct water taste. And so if the coffee... Uh, TDS, total dissolved solids, is too high or even too low, it actually can affect our extraction. You'll have to excuse that personal story. Uh, try to finish our content here. <laughs> All right, as we roast coffee, the chemical structures develop inside those coffee beans. It changes and it breaks down inside the beans. Okay, so we're getting into some roasting theory here. Gases become trapped inside the beans, and this is why fresh, fresh ground coffee smells so fantastic. It's so aromatic, right? And so when we brew our coffee, we first might have to let it bloom, and so we pre-wet it. If you've ever seen a barista add a little water and then wait 10 or 20 seconds, you might see the coffee bubble up a little bit in the filter. And that's what, what's happening is the carbon dioxide is escaping from the coffee grounds, from the roasting process, especially with coffee that's only a couple days out of the roaster. This actually allows better water flow during the brewing process and thus better coffee extraction. The pre-wetting stage, if you just want to have a general rule, is often 15 to 30 seconds. Okay, So it'll be longer for lighter roast or fresher and larger volumes. And then we often double the water uh, in terms of the coffee mass. So if I've got that 60 grams of coffee in a one liter Chemex, I'm gonna add 120 grams of water to my 60 grams of coffee. Likewise, if it's a smaller V60 and I only have 20 grams of coffee in my coffee bed, then I'm gonna add about 40 grams or 40 milliliters of water for that pre-wetting stage. All right, now look at this uh, Chemex in this nice V shape here, top left. What is channeling and how can it occur? Okay, so we wanna look at even pouring a nice flat bed, grind in our flow rate, target time. But what about channeling? Imagine that a barista is trying to be fancy or they're not paying attention and they're pouring water randomly or sporadic or more so in one direction that forces the water, water's lazy, and so it'll find the path of least resistance, and there might be more water going through the left side than the right side. Or there might be a hole that kind of develops, and so the water can escape easily from one side or another. Well, again, talking about extraction, extraction and channeling are closely related, because what you do is you over-extract the left side, let's say, where the water's flowing easily while you leave a lot of dissolvable, soluble coffee material on the right side. And so our goal with coffee extraction is always balanced, even extraction. So we want to start with a flat, even coffee bed, and we encourage even water contact. Okay, so that's uh, moving our hand around in a steady circle from the outside in and the inside out, and generally just creating even turbulence. The goal is balanced extraction. Now, I said we were going to get to six big variables. Here's the extraction variables. And uh, I encourage you to commit these to memory. This will come up all over the SCA training. But the first one is temperature. Okay, So again, temperature is the energy of water. And when we talk about extraction, we're pulling, dissolving material from the coffee. So the higher the temperature, the more energy is in that water. And just like a strong a strong man, a strong woman is going to fight harder so that hot water is going to extract faster and stronger. But generally our temperatures that we use is 92 to 96 degrees Celsius or 195 to 205 Fahrenheit. 
that will fit most of our brewing devices and roast levels. Now, uh, per brewing device, time. So temperature and time. Those are the first two T's. Two to five minutes, okay, that'll, that'll include most all of those brewing devices that we included in uh, part one, I believe it was, on our PowerPoint. So again, time is already predetermined by your device. You're not going to change that unless there's a problem. Turbulence. Time, temperature, turbulence, three T's. Turbulence uh, might happen if you actually have to stir the coffee, say in an AeroPress or in a siphon pot, you physically stir the coffee. However, with a lot of this, water creates its own turbulence. So you can think of a whirlpool, you can think of uh, bubbles moving through um, water, like through a hot tub, right? This creates movement, this creates action. And any kind of turbulence or action, water flowing, actually encourages that dissolving, soluble process for the coffee. So if you increase turbulence, you're going to increase extraction. I should back up and say, if you increase time, you will increase extraction. Again, with temperature, if you increase temperature, you are increasing energy and extraction. Brew ratio. Again, this should be fixed by your gold standard. Okay, so if you need to help with the brew ratio, go back to the gold standard. But again, 1 to 16, 1 to 17, 1 to 18, those are typical target best ranges for brewing devices. Grind particle size. Okay, so fine, medium, coarse, and somewhere in between is determined by what? Brewing device. And then pressure. Most brewing devices will be fixed in regard to pressure. Okay, so a, a filter brew uses gravity. An espresso machine will use eight to nine bars of pressure. Uh, AeroPress, that's something that you actually get to press through. A vacuum siphon, that'll use the force of gravity and vacuum to use pressure to pull or extract coffee. And let's repeat, what's the optimal extraction? How much of that flavor do I want to pull or dissolve off the coffee? I can dissolve up to 30%. Do I want to? No. 18 to 22 percent is the optimal extraction. And then what temperature should we generally use? 92 to 96 or in Fahrenheit 195 to 205. Brewing equipment and storage is pretty simple. It's just like storing your coffee beans. You want to avoid coffee oil buildup. You want to uh, make sure that grounds don't become clogged in brewing passages like in a French press, you want to remove that metal screen. Temperature can affect your brewing devices. It can uh, expand or harm plastic and rubber. Sunlight, UV rays can also deteriorate your brewing materials, your brewing devices. Moisture, uh, you want to keep your filters clean. You want to keep your filters free of mold or free of moisture. As always, clean is good. Cleaner is better. And so keep it safe, keep it clean. That's the number one goal. What should be an important consideration for your French press? You know, buildup of coffee oils, mocha pot, buildup of coffee oils. They can become rancid. Coffee grounds can get stuck. How should we store our AeroPress plastic or rubber? How should we store our coffee filters? Clean, dry. We should avoid high temperatures. We've pretty much covered the content. I'm trying to get finished here for the last section. Uh, written assessment, 15 questions, 60% correct. This is basic foundation material. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. There's only 15 questions on the ex exam. It's pretty. It's actually a pretty easy course to start with, the brewing foundation. So next to the introduction, coffee. Uh, brewing is a great place to start along with green. Um, and I want to say congratulations. This is the end. So your next stop is certification. Uh, I highly encourage you to find a local trainer, find a local class. If you can't do that, I'd be happy to try to reach out and get you in touch. We've got WeChat QRs and Yoku, Yoku QRs. You know, in Asia and China, they're pretty high tech with their QR scanning. They love that. If you're elsewhere, uh, feel free to jump on the website, www.sca.training or we've got our YouTube channel, SCA Coffee English. 
Yoku, SCA Coffee English Training. Make sure you put the underscores. Thanks so much. This has been great.